Hello, welcome to worship here at Lima United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Karen Bartkowski, and I really am so glad that you chose to join us for worship today, especially today as we celebrate World Communion Sunday, one of my very favorite worship services actually of the whole year. I love the idea that we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion with Christians all over the world today that we are reminded that we do not walk this Christian journey of discipleship alone, that all around the world there are Christians receiving this beautiful gift of God's grace through the sacrament of Holy Communion today. So if you need to pause the video to gather some elements at home for communion, I would encourage you to do that now. Get a, a piece of bread or a cracker and maybe some water or some juice. Um, and kind of put that aside because later on we'll be celebrating communion together. As we move into the month of October, um, that means that we have a new memory verse for the month of October, and it comes from James chapter 3, verse 17 this month. Last month we memorized James chapter 2, verse 17. So this month, James chapter 3, verse 17, and it says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. What an amazing gift from God we get. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today as we listen to the key verse, a verse that can center us on our worship experience today from James chapter 1 verse 21b. Welcome with meekness, the imparted word that has the power to save your souls. Let's call ourselves to worship this morning. Come and worship God, who in Christ Jesus brings forgiveness and reconciliation to the world. Let the peoples come from north and south, from east and west, to join hands around the table and together seek God's shalom. Come, Holy Spirit, implant in us the words of life. Nourish us by word and sacrament that we may hear your voice and receive your life-changing truth. Let's pray together. God of all nations, we give you thanks that we can each develop our own personal relationship with you. Yet we also experience you by being in community with others, even people we cannot see or will never meet. Thank you for making humankind in your image, rich in diversity. Teach us to live in true communion with each other and with you. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Good morning, I'm Jennifer Christinger. Today's scripture lesson is from James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27, the New Living Translation. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be all quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't, uh, don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget, forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion is the sight of God the Father, means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the word corrupt you. Did you know that Thursday, September 16th was International Day of Listening? I figured there must be a lot of good jokes about listening on the internet, so I googled it and International Day of Listening came up. I thought to myself, now that is a good joke. An International Day of Listening? Just 
thinking about how unlikely it is that two people from different perspectives in today's world would actually sit and listen respectfully to each other, <laughs> it's almost enough to make us laugh out loud. But it turns out the International Day of Listening is a real thing. It happens every year on the third, thir third Thursday of September, and it's sponsored by the International Association of Listening. But guess what I discovered when I tried to learn more about it? There is another International Day of Listening coming up in November, sponsored by a different group. Pretty ironic that the listening groups are not listening to each other. As far-fetched as an actual International Day of Listening sounds, in a way, that is exactly what today is. World Communion Sunday is a day when all Christians around the globe come together to be nourished by one common source, to welcome with meekness the imparted word that has the power to save our souls, quoting our key verse for today. Truly, there can be no communion without listening. The practices of listening well and doing well, doing good, are deeply connected. Last month, and especially last week, we were working on our memory verse from James chapter 2, 17. So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. God's word should not just go in one ear and out the other. It should go in our ears and then come out of us in the form of more God-like words and actions. James speaks of the gospel, calling it the imparted word that has the power to save our souls. And he goes on to give examples of how this word planted in us should transform us. What kind of fruit will the word of God planted in us go on to produce? Well, for one thing, it will go on to produce good works. Last weekend, we partnered with Help Build Hope to build all the walls for a Habitat for Humanity house. We started by cutting the lumber on Friday afternoon, and less than 48 hours later, the walls were loaded onto a truck headed for Georgia. This week, I got to talk to the director of the Troop County, Georgia Habitat for Humanity Agency. Her name is Sandy, and when I called her on Monday morning, the very first thing she said was, thank you and your amazing church so much. Our men just finished unloading the walls and you all did a great job. This is such a blessing. She has the kind of sweet Southern accent that is just so cute. I should have recorded her so I could have played her words for you. When I told her that we would like to mail one of our prayer shawls to her so it could be presented to the homeowners, she said, stop now, you're making me start to cry. And then when I told her it was one of the children in our congregation who suggested sending the prayer shawl, she was really touched. The imparted word has the power not only to save our souls, it causes grace and peace and encouragement to multiply beyond our souls. Good things happen when we allow the word of God to transform us and move us to serve others in need. It's like ripples on the surface of the water that keep forming long after the stone you threw has sunk. Good begets good. But the opposite is also true. Bad begets bad. That is why James says everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. James is not saying we should never get angry, but he's caution, cautioning us against anger that is impulsive and destructive. Our quick judgments and harsh words, our angry reactions, these too cause ripples to form long after the stone has sunk. Long after we speak the words, our actions and words have an echo. These are not the kind of ripples that bring about things like hope and justice and peace and joy. A few years ago, I was asked to fill, fill out a reference form for a young woman in my church who wanted to go to Honduras and work for a year in a Christian orphanage. The form asked all the usual questions. How long have you known the applicant? Describe his or her commitment to Jesus, etc. And then it asked a question that really made me think. 
Do you consider this applicant to be a peacemaker? Or does this applicant require the presence of a peacemaker? Do you consider this person to be a peacemaker? Or do they require the presence of a peacemaker? In other words, is this person you're recommending quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry? Or are they a little on the volatile side and they need a person like that to help them get along with others? This applicant was a middle child, so I, I wrote about how I was pretty sure she's a peacemaker. But it got me to thinking, am I a peacemaker? Or are we peacemakers? Or do we require the presence of a peacemaker? Do you like to throw gasoline on the fires around you? Or would you rather join the fire brigade? James, no doubt, wants us to join the fire brigade, to engage in good works that heal and restore, not to engage in rash or hurtful actions and speech that divide and damage. Being a peacemaker is not about preserving the status quo, you can't make an omelet without cracking some eggs, but it's about working for justice in a way that honors God. As Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Today is World Communion Sunday. Christians around the world will, part will participate in the sacrament of communion. Our denominational labels and our theological distinctives divide us, but the sacrament of communion unites us. This meal is an act of listening, listening to the word of God that says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listening to the word of God that says, I am light, I am life, and because I live, you also will live. Listening to the word of God that says, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. When life upsets us or treats us unfairly or makes us want to throttle somebody, we don't have to lash out in anger. We can trust. We can listen. We can express our feelings to God and allow God's presence to help us navigate each difficult season. We can receive the bread and juice from communion, like manna from heaven, just enough sustenance and grace for this day, giving us what we need to do the good God is calling us to do now, trusting God to be at work for good well beyond the confines of our day. One of the things I love about our United Methodist Communion Liturgy is how it connects the communion meal, God's good gift to us, with us living out our faith, our good gift to the world. In our communion liturgy, we ask God to bless the gifts of bread and wine, to make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. This holy meal brings about peace between us and God, so we can bring peace in the world. We also pray that this meal would make us one with God and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. One day Christ will come again and our good works will no longer be needed. But until then, the communion meal quickens us to do the ministry Christ would have us do. And then, at the end of our liturgy, we give thanks for this holy mystery, for this sacrificial meal in which Christ gives himself to us. And we ask God to help us to go into the world, strengthened by the Holy Spirit, so we can give ourselves for others. Good begets good. Like ripples in the pond, the communion meal is meant to resound in echoes of blessing that reach far and wide beyond ourselves. James has some harsh words for us to think about in this passage. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Wow, <laughs> that's a hard, hard teaching. But what we say and do matters. Jesus, the word made flesh has come into our lives. 
Will we let him do the work of truly transforming us? It's not enough to profess with our lips because a lot of other talk comes from our lips too. If our faith isn't bringing out an inward transformation that is manifested in changed outward behavior, it's not true faith. We cannot offer to the world what we don't have. So let's be quick to listen today and hear the voice of God inviting us to the communion table, inviting us to confess our sins and be forgiven, inviting us to name our pain and receive comfort, inviting us to turn and see that we have found in Jesus a friend who will never leave us or forsake us, inviting us to taste and see that the Lord is good, and then inviting us to be channels of that goodness into the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
for us to do something. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Because there is one loaf, we who are many, one body, for we partake of one loaf, the bread in which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Let us now share the communion. This is the body of Christ given for you.
My friend, this is the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, All I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for all that is unseen. Our communion meal is evidence, something we can see, hold, touch, and experience to help bolster our faith for that which is unseen. So be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry, because God is indeed, work, indeed work, at work for good. So welcome the imparted word that has the power to save your soul. Go in peace. Amen.